Hello everybody, here we are today and we're going to be doing my preview and pick for the Eastern Final between the Toronto Argonauts and the Montreal Alouettes. So before we start, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or the CFL, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get into it. So the Elves are meeting the Argos in the Eastern Final yet again after seeing them last season where Toronto ended up winning to go on to the Grey Cup. Ended up winning the Grey Cup and now they are looking to repeat as champions 16-2 on the year this year. A historically good side that will be hosting Montreal 11-7. That is looking to get to the Grey Cup for the first time in over 10 years. So you have a lot of storylines going into this week. What are some things to talk about going into this game? So the first one will be whether or not the Alouettes can get to Chad Kelly. This in part is sex, but also quarterback pressures. Just being able to make life hard for him. So the Argonauts, on their part, ended up doing a really good job at preventing sacks this season. Had the fewest sacks allowed in the league with 19, taking on an LOS team that was tied for third worst in the league with uh, 41 sacks on the year. They are tied with Hamilton. However, over their final 13 games of the year, they had 36 sacks and 216 quarterback pressures, which were both tied for a second in the league in that span. So able to have a lot of things go really well for them that correlated with the Sean Lemon trade. And we know Sean Lemon is going to play a factor in this. So will Darnell Sankey, but some other guys too you got to watch out for. Tyrese Beverett, um, you know, looking at a guy like Mustafa Johnson, who ended up, I believe, having a sack in the game. If not, he definitely had a QB pressure. So it's one of those deals where you've got multiple guys you have to worry about and this is a team that over a relatively large stretch has been able to be one of the better sides at getting in the quarterback's face and making life difficult for them. I'm going to be honest with you, sex may or may not matter in this game. Obviously you want to be able to get more sex on a quarterback to put them in a worse spot to get first downs. However, in two of the three games we were looking at in the regular season against the Argonauts, they weren't able to register any. So that's kind of a problem there. And then the other game that they were able to, they did obviously get to bring down Chad. But the problem remains that they weren't able to get the win. However, I will say this. You'd rather have them go out there and take Chad down and say, well, we did get some sacks and lose. Rather than say, well, you know, Chad had a lot of time in this game to air it out to guys like Daniels, guys like Coxie. Um, and you would just like to say that we could get to him rather than... Well, Toronto's, Argonaut, or Toronto's line played really well in this game. The second talking point that I want to talk about is the Montreal Alouettes record against good teams. Now, I don't really know how to put this. Montreal was 11-0 this year against teams that you would probably categorize as more of the bad teams. This year, though, against the good teams or the cup contending teams, BC, Toronto, and Winnipeg, 0-7 on the year. They take on a Toronto side that, again, already went 16-2 in the regular season and went 9-0 at home. So, you're looking to beat them on their turf for the first time all season, and you're going to have to do that, of course, with them having a bye. Montreal, for their part, ended up having a 6-3 road record this year, but guess who their three losses were to on the road this year? That's right, BC, Toronto, and Winnipeg. They are going to have their hands full in this one, and the reality is, too, BMO Field is set to have it's biggest crowd ever. We're looking at possibly even having a sellout, which is so great because, you know, you're looking at some years like 2018, especially was just hard. Um, 2021 was very difficult as well. 2019 was difficult as well, I guess, if you want to say in terms of attendance. So there's going to be a really good crowd here, probably looking to make a lot of noise. The most noise maybe we've seen in a Argos game that isn't a great cup in recent memory. And this is going to be something they have to deal with. So the question remains, can the Elves be the road warriors and end up doing what they've been able to do for most of the season, which is win games on the road? Or will their lack of being able to beat teams that are above them end up holding true here as they take on Toronto and Toronto? The final talking point is, will we see a running back matter in the playoffs? Now, that sounds kind of funny, sounds a little bit weird, but, you know, with the CFL being a pass-heavy league and talk of, you know, some of these teams that are more run-heavy still not being able to get wins with really good running backs, the question remains, will we see a running back have an impact? This game, I would say yes. Now, I would say that this is a little bit different from some other circumstances where I talked about James Butler, him playing for Hamilton. He ended up having a decent stat line, but wasn't able to help make an impact. I would say that AJ Olette is going to be able to have an impact because of the fact that the Argos are so deep in every area, you know, looking at the receivers, they're really good there and they are able to have kind of a one-two punch. They complement each other. If Butler gets bottled up, that's a problem. And, 
Hamilton's going to have to throw the ball. Are they going to be able to do that? Tough to see. But as for Toronto, they're probably going to be able to still throw the ball, which I think keeps teams a little bit thrown off when they're on defense trying to figure out how to try to contain this Argos offense. In Montreal with Noel Thorpe as their defensive coordinator is going to have a lot of work to do here as AJ ended up having three really good games against him. 43 carries, 253 yards, and three majors on the ground. In all those games, I believe he had a five-yard average per carry. Um, one of the games he ended up having just 50 yards, but he only had 10 carries in that. So looking at somebody that could make an impact, not with just yards, but being able to find the end zone, which is a big deal here. Will he get 20 touches? Couldn't tell you. But even if he gets, let's say, 15 carries and he's able to average almost six yards per carry, he's going to have a big day. Pair that with probably a touchdown on the ground. And you could see how AJ is going to wreak havoc on this team, on this defense. And they're going to have to figure out how to stop him because that makes their lives a little bit easier, knowing maybe, just maybe, they're going to be one-dimensional. That being the Argos offense that finished second in the league for points per game, 32.8 points per game. Probably would have scored even more had they not had nothing to play for down the final six games of the year. There was only one game where AJ was really bottled up at this point of the season. I believe it was against Saskatchewan. So maybe look at some footage to see what went there and kind of what went well for the Riders to try to contain him. I believe he had like 38 yards on 13 carries, something like that. Either way, I'm going to be picking AJ to have a big game and play an impact in this one. So... Overall, what are my thoughts on this game going into it? Well, Montreal is a 10.5 point underdog, which is big. You know, you're looking at over a touchdown and a field goal, um, you know, playing a factor in this game. I would say that the Owls are in a really weird spot where they have had some close games against Toronto and even really should have had one where they should have won it earlier in the year. I think it was the first game of the season, and they didn't. Not a lot of teams can say that against an Argonaut side that beat teams early and often. Montreal can say that they were in a spot where they could have won the game and probably should have, especially in that first game of the season where these two met. Now they're going to have to, you know, realistically play their best game of their lives as they look to pull a 1989 Saskatchewan Rough Riders when they took down Edmonton in the Western Final all the way back then. So with that being said, what is my pick for this game? I'm going to be picking the Toronto Argonauts does feel a bit like a easy pick but at the same time Montreal has been able to prove me wrong all year I had them being a team that was 5 and 13 they went 11 and 7 and now I've been talking for a long time about the record against the really good teams go out there and prove me wrong again otherwise you're going to be looking at Toronto playing in a great cup back-to-back -back years knowing you could have been in that great cup and in your franchise's title dropped so we will see what are your thoughts on this game who do you think will win let me know down below in the comments also please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new everybody stay safe and have a great night <music>